Amen, amen. God bless you, family of God. It's your brother DJ Sam Rock right here on the Blaze Bible Study, right here at soulwinnerswithaz.org. That's www.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Also available on iTunes, TuneIn, MySpace, Twitter, Facebook, um, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, man, so many other networks. Oh, glory to God. iHeartRadio as well, and um, SoundCloud, YouTube, and so much more. I want to thank you. If you're a first time listener, thank you for coming through. Uh, I don't know how you got to this podcast, um, but I believe in no coincidences. I believe that God draws all people to himself, men or women, boys and girls. He draws all of them to himself. If he wanted you to hear something tonight, stay here. Because if God is real, that I know he is, as I know he is, amen, I believe that he has something for you as well tonight. So if you're not a long time listener, Amen. Welcome to the Blaze Bible Study um, with your brother DJ Sam Rock. Also, for all those listeners who have been listening to me for years and years, um, we're coming up on 10 years in September of 2018. We'll be 10 years strong. And I hate to date um, podcasts like that, but um, it's it's called for a celebration. So if you hear this after the 10 years, low willing, amen. Um, it's because I was excited about being in this for 10 years and God using a uh, simple man that just said yes to him and no to myself and the things that uh, I wanted to do um, that were leading me to total destruction. Tonight, we're talking about something that was on my heart earlier today, and it's about today is not all. Like, in other words, uh, there's more than just today. It's more than today. That's the title. And that's dealing with what we do today really affects our eternity. What we do today affects our tomorrow. What we do today affects our family. What we do today affects our lives. What we do today affects our health. What we do today affects our finances. What we do today, there's more than just today. There's more than today. Uh, I'm going to explain that a little bit more. I know that might be a little bit, um, you know, weird as a title, but I'll explain it in a minute. But first, I always pray first before we get into any type of Bible study, because I know for sure when the word of God is coming to you or to me, um, there's going to be some kind of distraction. But tonight I pray against distraction in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the power of your love, the power of your grace and your mercy, Lord God, upon every single one of us. I pray, Lord God, for uh, just a great measure of faith poured into us, Lord God, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, Lord God, from your voice from your word to our minds and to our hearts, Lord God. I pray that this will be a Holy Ghost transfer tonight. I pray, Lord God, that uh, we will understand what more than tomorrow, more than today means. Excuse me, Lord. And I ask you, Lord God, that you will continue to do a great work in this ministry, a great work in every single listener, not only for them, but their families as well, Lord God. I pray increase in finances, increase in health, increase in life, Increase in wisdom, increase in knowledge, increase in all things that you have prepared for every single listener tonight. I pray this by faith, knowing that you hear my prayers and you answer all the prayers according to your righteousness and your glory through your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. Amen. Amen and amen. God bless you. I'm excited because I know for some, for sure, I was going to say for some, but for sure, all of us have distractions in our lives for me, I could be doing something so focused and then all of a sudden either a text or a Facebook post or a Twitter post or an Instagram post will pop up on my computer, pop up on my cell phone or something like that, and I'll go to it. And then by the time I get out of that situation and I get to where I was going, sometimes I even forget what I was doing. It's called a distraction. And distractions cause us to lose our focus. And if we lose our focus, most of the time we'll start losing our joy. So today is a new day. When I wake up every morning, I thank God for me waking up, right? First thing I do, uh, I, com- uh, I train myself and I start in a new holy habit, I call it. When I go onto my phone, the first thing I do is grab the verse of the day. If you don't have uh, our app, it's um, available on Android, also available on the TuneIn, excuse me, iTunes, so it's an Apple device. If you have that, we have it there. And if you have an Android device, we have it. All you have to do is go to your stores and look up Soul Winners, S-O-U-L, 
space W I N N E R Z, and you look up um, that as an app. You find an app, download it. It's a tiny. It'll take a tiny space on your phone or your tablet or your computer, and um, it'll be worth it. You could um, download it, take the spiritual assessment, so we know uh, where you're at in your spiritual walk. Amen. Just be honest with it, and you'll get some um, daily scriptures. So I made it a habit that um, I post a daily scripture before I do anything else online for that day. I'll post it up, uh, put a picture in it, and go forward from there. Because it's like I think of the Word of God as if I was a running back in a football team. You know, the Word of God is my lead blocker, and I'm close behind that lead blocker trying to get to the touchdown, to the goal, right? So the goal of my life will be from now on and always will be to please the Lord, right? And that's um, basically what this whole message is going to be about. More than today, what we do for Jesus really matters for eternity. More than today, what we do for Jesus, amen, uh, we want to please the Lord. I want to please the Lord, and I'm hoping that you do too. But since we want to do that, and since I'm putting that out there, there's going to be some things out there that's going to try to, let's see, try to steal our goal, try to steal our enthusiasm, try to steal our hoorah, try to steal all that from us. It's called a joy stealer. These are the things to avoid when, you, when you're out there truly trying to please God. You're seeking after God, right? You might be going through some kind of issue with your health. You might be going through some financial issues, some relationship issues, right? You might be having trouble with your kids. You might be having trouble at your job. You might be having trouble with your health. Whatever the case may be, we have to avoid these joy stealers. Because if we continue to try, right, uh, in our own, I call it willpower, in our own strength, it ain't going to go down, man. It's not going to work. But if you avoid these things, I guarantee you, and not only avoid it, but replace these things with God's word. A verse from scripture, uh, you know, a Bible study like this, um, a prayer, something to replace these joy stealers. And here's a list I, I found online, right? Regret. Regret. What do you have regrets about? I have regrets, but I don't live with those regrets. In other words, I don't replay them every five, six, seven months or five, six, seven weeks or five, six, seven days. I have regrets. Yes, we all do. But if you focus on that regret, it'll steal your joy for sure. Dread. Do you dread things? Like today was a dreary day in my area and I was like, man, when it's dreary, it's hard for me to get going. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to sleep all day. But I know um, I cannot do sleeping all day as an entrepreneur. You know, as a man of God, I have to go and support my family and work, right? Do something. Worrying never, never solved anything in my life. I don't know about you. Worrying about things never helped. Perfectionism versus excellence. You know, perfectionism can never be achieved in a lifestyle or in a lifetime of any human being because every human is not perfect. But if you are a Christian and you have the perfect one in you, Holy Spirit, God in you, the perfect one, then we're being perfected. It's a difference between perfectionism and being um, in an excellent spirit. Like you could have an excellent lifestyle. I believe that wholly and truly because God changes us. He transforms us from inside out and we, we could do excellent things and we could, be men and women of excellence, young teenagers of excellence, young ch children of excellence. I believe that. But there's a difference between perfectionism and excellence. So if you're trying to be perfect, that will definitely steal your joy. How about this one? A critical attitude. A critical attitude will never get you far in any sphere of influence, in any circle of friends, in any educational system, job system, um, business. A critical spirit is kind of like toxic to those that you are uh, exposing yourself to or exposing, you know, that attitude over other people. It will never do anything good for you. As a matter of fact, a critical attitude can actually physically make you sick in your body. It could cause migraines, headaches, um, high blood pressure, all kinds of things can happen when you have a critical attitude. How about this one? Complaining. I mean... <laughs> 
I made it a, 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 a goal of mine a long time ago to not complain. Every now and then, yeah, I do complain because, you know, it's the human side of me comes out every now and then. But for the most part, and people could testify, not only just me saying it, people could testify that I, I do things without complaining. Although I have reasons sometimes to complain, but I do it without complaining because I know for sure that I'm grateful for what God has done in my life. And being uh, in a place of thanksgiving, thanking God for all the things that he has given you, um, really erases complaints. I can't complain. I've met people that have so much less than I do. Amen. And I've met people that have so much more than I have. And in either case, um, they don't complain on the top. They don't complain at the bottom. They don't complain in the middle. So I learned that as something so I could do. You know, people who are without food right now in other countries serving the Lord, um, they don't have anything. They might be living in a shack. Their church might be just like, a, a, you know, a bamboo um, roof and two walls. But yet they have joy, they have peace, they have grace over their lives. And they're praising God and they have the word of God and they're living out um, their lives without complaining. And people who are rich that are Christians, they are rich Christians. It's possible Jesus said it's harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God, right, than, you know, an average Joe or, you know, a person going through the gate um, just as a beggar or whatever. It's harder for a rich person. But there are rich people who I know that are Christians, and they don't complain about anything uh, that they they should be complaining about as well or they could complain about. You, you're you wondering what can a rich person possibly complain about? Well, a rich person could probably complain about not being um, accepted as a, a regular person or always being asked for money or not knowing who are their real friends are they after their money or so they could be complaining about those things but I know some rich Christians that don't complain about that as well there's so much more being ungrateful horrible that will steal your joy negative thinking negative thinking is powerful negative thinking if you think negative for too long or for long enough, that negative thinking would turn into negative actions. Those negative actions can cause somebody to get hurt, yourself included. You know, that's how people get into um, drug binges, you know, alcohol, uh, sexual harassment, all that type of stuff is because of negative thinking. If you place a negative thought in your mind and you play that thing out over and over again and you, you rehearse it in your mind, it starts traveling and transferring into your heart and then, um, back to your mind and then you're going to start wanting to do that negative thought and that's why um, people get into fits of rage and anger and cause murder because they're thinking about negative things all along not understanding that that's robbing their joy and the bible says the joy of the lord right is our strength so we need to have this joy i'll give you one more unrealistic expectations when i place an unrealistic expectation on myself that's stealing my joy. When I place an unrealistic unreal- expectation on someone else, not only am I judging that person incorrectly, and not only am I um, failing that person incorrectly, but I'm also failing myself, and that causes me to um, not be in joy, and it steals my joy. It's a lot more, and um, you know, we could talk about that. I'll copy and paste the rest of them uh, onto the details of this podcast. But I just wanted to let you know that our goal. And my goal for my life and I will go for tonight is to know that there's more than today. In other words, you might be on the top of the mountain right now doing great and everything might be good in your bank account. Your health is great. Your relationships are great. Everything. But there's more than just today. There's other people out in the world right now that are not having a good day. I'm having an OK day. I'm, I'm having a blessed day. I can't complain. But there's other people right now that are listening that are out there people you know people you don't know people i know people i don't know are out there struggling and we got to get some kind of message of hope to them because sometimes people uh, are just searching and searching searching uh, for answers and when they come across us we claim to have the answer the lord jesus christ the way the truth and life right and sometimes we don't say anything and because we don't say anything Um, that person won't experience or won't understand this concept of more than today. Eternal life, what is it? The eternal life, the expression occurs in the Old Testament, right? 
but only in Daniel. Interesting, right? Daniel chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Many of those whose bodies lie dead and buried will rise up, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So we see that some people will go to a place of everlasting life and other people will go to a place of everlasting shame and contempt. Right? But in the New Testament, when Jesus shows up, it shows up all over the New Testament, this this whole thing about eternal life. Because Jesus showed up in a time of our history, right? Because God is outside of time. We have time. So he stepped into our time, right? He stepped from outside of time into our time. That's why it's a historic fact, a historical fact that Jesus lived, died, and rose again. And his promise is that he's coming back. So in Matthew chapter 7, verse 14, Jesus himself said it like this. But the gateway to life is small and the road is narrow and only a few ever find it. I'm trying to find this narrow road. I'm in the narrow road, actually. And because I am, I'm so grateful that I'm inside, right? Inside the, the, the victorious team, inside the winning team. So that's why my goal is to please Jesus. Amen. As I fail to please others, sometimes uh, my goal truly is to, is to please Jesus. So what you do for Jesus matters for eternity. So there's a lot more to life than what you see going on right now. You understand that eternity compared to this time that we're living is like, put it like this, one second on this earth. No, excuse me. One thousand years on this earth is probably like one millisecond in eternity. Or probably even more than that. Because eternity is like one times a billion, trillion, million, ten times, millions, trillions, whatever the the number is, it keeps on going. It doesn't stop. Eternity is beyond my mathematical computation. uh, Eternity is beyond uh, me knowing and finding out how many days are left in eternity. Eternity is that big. So there's a lot more to life than what we see going on right this second. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, it says it like this. So whether here at home or away, that is in the body or in heaven, we make it our aim to please him, Jesus, because we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or or bad see whether we do something good this thing is more than today when we do something bad this life is more than today jesus the true judge right will see to it that we are judged for what we did good and what we did bad now the things that i do today and the things that you do today in my own body have an impact on what i receive If I decide to drink alcohol all day from the time I wake up to the time I I, I record this, my body's going to suffer from intoxication, swellingness, right? Uh, Hangovers, headaches, um, slurred talk, all kinds of negative effects on my body that I decided to do upon myself. If you decided to um, jump off uh, a 10 story roof because you felt like you know you heard a voice tell you to jump off that will affect your body in a negative way as well hopefully that will never occur in your life or in my life but i suggest that if you jump off a 10 story building or house or whatever the case when you hit the ground i firmly believe that you will be hurt if not killed See, God doesn't want us to make these type of decisions that will hurt, you know, not only us, but our family. And then the more than today situation will be out the door because then we'll be in eternity either facing um, God as judge or hopefully facing God as savior. And on a welcome committee, we'll be with him to enter into the gates of heaven, right, with him. So the things that I do today in my body have an impact on what I receive, what I will enjoy for all eternity. So 
you know, tomorrow is not promised. So today is a new day. So in order for us to please God, the only way we can please God is by having faith. First of all, faith in Jesus Christ being who God said Jesus is, which is the only begotten Son of God. Amen. And Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man gets to heaven. No man gets to the Father in heaven unless you go through him. So very exclusive. So you can't bypass, jump over, um, delete, or, you know, make another request of how to meet the Father in heaven other than getting through Jesus. Jesus said himself, so there is no debate about that in my mind. So I know a lot of people say, no, you know, that's impossible. Jesus can't be the only way. There's many ways to God. Well, well then we have to take, well, you have to take that issue up with the Lord Jesus himself. A lot of people I, may, I meet that are against um, this this world system that I believe is the way, the truth, and the life in Jesus, right? They always have problems with the Bible, the Christians, um, the lifestyle, um, the commandments, or whatever. But when I ask, do you have anything against Jesus? Nine out of ten of them say, no, I don't have anything against Jesus. It's just you Christians. See how the people make a different, I can't even say that word, different, differentiate, or, you know, they compare Christians to Jesus. The funny thing about it, in my mind, is that I can't live out a Christian life unless it's Jesus living it out through me. Because Jesus Christ, from what I see in the scriptures, he's the only one that was perfect and lived a perfect life. Although he did live a perfect life without sin, he was put on the cross for my sin and for your sin. Willfully, he could have got off that cross. He could have sent legions of angels to take care of the whole situation. But because the word prophesied of his coming and what he was to do, he fulfilled the prophecies. Jesus Christ fulfilled the prophecies and got on that cross for me and for you and paid the sin debt that I owed God. I owed God a, a penalty of sin. Like I owed him a sin debt that I could never afford. I don't care if I was a trillionaire. It's not enough. Jesus Christ was the only one that could pay the sin debt for my life and for your life. So when he lived, he knew he was living more than today. I want to live more than today. I want to know that in order for me to please the Lord, I have to walk in faith. And what I do today, knowing that it affects my tomorrow, affects my future, affects my family, I need to live this thing out truthfully, honestly, and wholeheartedly. Otherwise, it's not. It's going to be a no-go. I've always been a person before Jesus saved me and changed my life. I've always been a person of my word. If I said I'm going to do something, I'll do it. You could ask any one of my friends from back in the day. They would say, yeah, Sam said he was going to do it. He did it. And when it came to money, when it came to jobs, when it came to helping somebody out, when it came, when it came to showing up, you know, the only, <laughs> only area I failed at in, in there was with the girl situation you know, lying to girls and all that stuff. But other than that, I really was a man of my word. Lying man of my word sometimes, but I kept it regardless. Also, um, when God saw me where I was, um, when he came to me and he saved my life and transformed me, he took that attribute, right, and tested it. <laughs> he tested it when I became born again with the people around me, what, how I was going to react, what I was going to do, what I was going to say, and will I still hold my allegiance strong with Jesus, although others were making fun of me and, you know, saying that it wasn't true what I was following and what have you. I'm here today to testify and to let you know that everything that God said that he was going to do in my life has been fulfilled. He said some other things that I see coming to pass, and I'm believing and trusting that he's going to continue to fulfill his promises over my life. And I want to tell you, if you heard a promise from God, you saw a promise from God in the scripture and it spoke to your life, trust in it. God will not hold back any one of his promises that he has made to you or he has made to me. God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. God is the promise. He is truth. There is no lying in God. There's no shadow or darkness in God. He's all light. He's all truth. He's all love. He's all grace. He's all mercy. He's all powerful. I don't want to preach. I just want to try to get through this Bible study, right? 
but it amazes me how people see God as someone that's trying to take something away from them. It's totally opposite. God is trying to give you the fullness of life. He actually says that he wants us to live life and life in abundance. He wants us to live a full life while we're here, this short time on earth, so that way when we get to, you know, heaven and eternity, we'll be like, man, that wasn't, you know, too bad. But here here we are in eternity, hanging out and loving up on our family members or whatever the case may be. But he wants us to live a full life now because there's more than today. So I hope you're getting that title, More Than Today. It's not about just what you did now or today. It's about what you do today going forward, trusting God, trying to please God by your faith that he sees displayed in your life. Amen. So he's talking to people right now who all throughout the ages have proven themselves faithful servants of the Lord. You know, I mean, there are people who are faithful to God. I want to think that I'm faithful to God. Amen. And I know a lot of people listening right now want to feel that same way or want to say that they're um, faithful to God. We all fall short of God's glorious standards. The Bible says it. I'm not perfect. I don't follow all the commandments. I break the commandments probably every day, somehow, some way. But God is so forgiving and so loving that he doesn't look at, um, you know, the Bible says in the the love chapter, I think it's 1 Corinthians 13. uh, One of the scriptures says that... um, Love does not hold records of wrongs. Amen. God's not holding a record of all the things you did wrong and then slap it in your face and say, look, look at all these things you did wrong. Get out of my face. He's not saying that. God holds no records of wrongs. He looks at us as his creation because he created us in the image of him. Amen. And he knows we need help. And he knows we need a savior. He knows we need um, redemption. He knows we need power from the Holy Ghost, from the Holy Spirit. God, he knows we need him. So he's not going to play a game of look what you did wrong and then, you know, put it in our face and then say, okay, you're on your own. God says he will never leave us nor forsake us. He will never fail us. His promises are all yes and amen. So to be on this journey with God, having a relationship with him, not being in a religion, amen, it's an amazing thing. And I'll raise my, I'll have, I have both of my hands raised right now. If you can see me, I'm like, God is amazing. If he could do it for me, I'm telling you. 100% he could do it for you. No, I don't have no uh, doubts about him saving people and transforming transforming people because he did it to me. So what we receive, right, uh, at the judgment seat, we get to keep forever. So some of you might be scared of that statement. What we receive at the judgment seat, we get to keep forever. So that means there's more than today. So if you totally, worldly blew it and screwed everything up for today, God is telling you right now, there's a new day coming. I don't know if you know this, but in my, in, my, in my experience with the toughest times of my life, the next day still came. And people were still about doing what they usually did. A lot of them didn't care about my situation. And the people who were walking through the situation with me, they noticed that other people were just going about doing their lives. The next day comes. But I believe that's one of the promises of God. It's a new day. It's always a new day coming. Amen. And when the new day of eternity comes for me and for you, we want to be in a position of God saying, okay, all those things that I asked you to do, you did it, or most of them. And now the reward uh, for the faithful servants throughout all the ages. Amen. The impact that you had on others, you could keep that at the judgment seat. You could keep all that forever the rewards, the crowns, everything that God has for you, you can keep it forever. So it's more than just today. So we have a future. We have a newness. Amen. All that stuff comes and all those blessings come from the living God. You know, we have that eternal life, the promise that Jesus said he's given us eternal life. All these things can be tested, can be watched, can be looked at. People testify, they have testimonies of the way their lives have been transformed because they've came to a realization that there's just more than today. Eternal life is promised. Jesus shows up, right? He gives it to us by way of salvation, by way of believing in him. So my question tonight as we wrap it up is if you're having a tough and rough day or a tough and rough month or year even at this point, 
I challenge you. And my question is, why wouldn't you go to a God or ask a God that I'm talking about that loves you, that gives you life, that gives you eternal life, freedom, that um, blesses you? Why wouldn't you ask that God, Jesus, to help you in your situation? And I believe if you do that, and if you did that right now, and when God answers you, amen, because he will, you'll realize then that, that there's just more than today. So I hope you got something out of it. I'll probably have to do a couple of more parts of this because I want to get into more eternal life scriptures and I ran out of time. But in the meantime, just remember always that God is good, right? God is truly good. Peace.